Sarah, I am expecting to see some pages by the end of the week. Do you hear me? Uh, yeah, I know, I know. I am just working here. Are you fake typing? <laughs> no. Anything but that. God, I wish I could return that stupid advance. Not stupid, it's amazing. Especially considering the fact that nobody reads anymore! What about right now? What if we just lived right now? Who is this guy? I don't know, looks like Austin Powers. Fuck with chimney sweep, come on. Hey everyone, I'm Quinn Marie with Hollywood First Look Features, and today we are talking to Ken Mock about his new film, The Right One. Thank you so much for meeting with us, Ken. Congratulations on your new film. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about this. This is your uh, feature film directorial debut. How was that? How was the process for that? You know, it was great. Uh, you know, what made it a lot easier for me was that, you know, I wrote the script as well. So I knew the script inside and out. And uh, it wasn't really such a strong transition for me because I've been so used to running shows for many years that, you know, when you direct a film, it's not just directing the actors, it's running a production as well. So, you know, the skill set, you know, translated very easily for me. Excuse me, weren't you at the Wanky Gallery in Fremont? I truly think you have me mistaken for somebody else. Who the hell are you? What's this guy's name anyway? You know what? I don't know. I brought you here for a reason. I got a feeling about you. You're mistaking crazy for interesting. You're a complete original. The main character is dealing with um, a lot of grief and they're trying to find ways to cope with this grief. Right. Uh, what what made you want to write something like this in, in this format, in a kind of a romantic comedy setting? Yeah, I, you know, there was a couple of sources for this story. One was, I have this fascination with the late actor Peter Sellers, who played Inspector Clouseau in and, and all the Pink Panther movies. And if you know anything about him, he was a brilliant mimic. He could play any character and do any accent. He played Indian characters, American characters, Southern characters. He was brilliant at them. But everybody who knew him said that in real life, he didn't know who he was. And that I found fascinating, that here was a guy that in real life was a cipher, who had no sense of self-identity and what would cause that. And then I think the other source was, I was reading about this um, social influencer, this big social in uh, influencer on Instagram a few years ago who had quit Instagram uh, because she had said that there was too much pressure on her because everything she was posting was fake. It wasn't the real her. And so it really started making me think about identity and how in this day and age now, how social media is kind of corrupting identity and we're not really presenting who we are. So the combination of that with the whole idea of Peter Sellers, kind of this idea blossomed out of that. What is that? He is the company's top sales performer for three straight years. That, you can tell that he's breaking about eight different dress code policies. Is he ever himself? Have I actually even met the guy? I need to know who I'm with. I noticed you used a lot of comedic actors or comedians um, to play these roles. It, was that a specific choice for you or, or was that just, did it just end up being that way? Well, you know, the, the movie does have a lot of comedic elements to it. It's kind of a fresh take on the romantic comedy. Um, and some of the characters are very outrageous. Um, obviously the main character of, of Godfrey, it's a person who has to have the ability to, to play different characters and be funny in that. So, you know, Nick did a great job in that. I wrote the the part of Kelly, the, the literary agent specifically for Eliza, and she just knocked it out of the park for me. The big surprise for me was how great Cleopatra Coleman was a comedy. I did not know that. Like I was a big fan of Cleo's, I knew she was a great actress, but it really surprised me at how good she was at comedy. And so when you have these three strong leads and they all have comedic abilities, it really infused the film. That's awesome. And was there any kind of um, improv or anything like that with them because they are they are all comedians? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, once I had gotten the takes I needed in the can, I really let um, all of the actors and actresses in this movie kind of improv. So there's a lot of stuff in this film and a lot of these scenes that come out of that improv and that give and take. And they were also good at it. So uh, I got very lucky with this cast, not only the main cast, but the supporting players who are also very gifted uh, uh, comic actors as well. I got a lot of them who came from Second City and you know all of those programs. So they were used to that kind of stuff. That's awesome. So what is what did you want the overall message to be with this film to, to your audience? Well, you know, um, there's so many different messages in the film. Um, 
I don't really want to specify what it is. I think it's interesting in each person that I've talked to on the movie, they've come away with a different uh, message from what they've gotten out of the film. And I think that's wonderful because I think the great thing about film is you as the audience member, you know, you are an active participant in the movie, right? And so when you see the movie, the movie's your own and how you interpret it and what you take away from it is very personal. And I never want to detract from that. So I would just say whatever you take out from the film is very valid. Well, thank you so much. And everyone else, check out The Right One on demand. And I'm Quinn Marie. You've been watching Hollywood First Look Features. We're all just one big organism. What we do has an effect on others. Who are you?